Oh, today is a very special day. I have a wonderful client flying in from out of state to take a look at some fabulous Boulder, Colorado homes. On this channel, I theorize, postulate, and pontificate plenty about classic and professional men's style, but what does that look like in action? How do I actually dress for my clients? And how does context affect the decisions I make when putting together an outfit? Get ready with me as I prepare for a day of work as a luxury real estate professional. Starting out, I've just gotten out of the shower, I've just done my hair, I just blow dry it, comb it, and I am going to start with this. This is a moisturizer and sunscreen. I'm not sponsored by them, nothing in this video is a sponsorship. I actually use all this stuff. It is very important, especially here at altitude in Colorado, to wear sun protection on your skin, so I always apply this any time I go out. This client, I don't know that well. I did meet them once earlier this year at an open house, and we have corresponded by email since, but I do know they are pretty laid back. They're very friendly people, they're very nice, and uh, I'm very excited to get to meet them again. This isn't your normal city home. We're actually going up into the mountains today, so we'll see how that affects the choices I make. You know, I always tend to dress professionally, but with a newer client, it's really critical for me to nail that first impression. So let's get started with how I actually manicure that outfit. Starting off, I'm going with just a basic white undershirt. I don't always wear an undershirt, but guys, it is December in Colorado. It is getting a little bit cold out, so that's always when I just add the extra layer. Next, we've got just a basic white collared shirt. This is a spread collar shirt from Nordstrom. My nicer shirts are the dry cleaners right now, but this does the job perfectly well. All right, that was seamless, right? I could do denim and that would probably be a little more fitting for the mountains in winter time. It's a little hardier, a little heavier of a fabric, but I am just gonna go with white here. Again, these clients are a little bit newer, so I want to err on the side of plain, conservative, and straightforward. As far as ties go, lately I have been really enjoying this gray rose floral pattern tie. It's not even that nice of a tie as far as construction goes, but I just really enjoy the pattern but I think I'm probably going to stick with my navy grenadine tie. You guys see this a lot? This tie is super versatile. The texture goes really well with my suit. This tie is really interesting because it is sophisticated without being loud. It's a very subtle pattern, but it has a beautiful shine to it and grenadine as a fabric. It's very special. It comes only from a very specific region in Italy. This particular tie is very well made. It is bespoke. It comes from one of the best tie makers in the world, Sam Hober out of Thailand. Now, in general, when I think about how I dress, I want to walk a line between competent, detailed, and professional, and open, friendly, and personable. And I'll talk more about this later, but because they're flying in and it's a big day tours, I really want them to feel like this person has everything in order for us. And so I want to look a little more formal, which is why I'm going to wear a vest. This is just a plain gray V-cut vest. It's very nice, it helps hold my tie in place. Again, it's winter time, guys. Much like the blubber of a whale or sea lion, this additional layer just helps me stay insulated from the cold and it lifts that formality of the outfit. It's just a little more formal than something like a tie bar. I actually personally really like tie bars. I like the way they look, but I want to stay a little more classic and conservative here. Plus it's so easy for a tie bar to go crooked and look sloppy. And for this setting, I really don't wanna be anxious about whether or not my tie bar is level. I'm having this important moment with the client. I really want to make sure they have my undivided attention. And then, as for my jacket and trousers, this is, of course, the same two-piece navy suit you guys see me wear all the time. This isn't my only suit, but it is my favorite, my most comfortable, and most versatile. It is fully lined with this beautiful paisley lining, the patch pockets, the rich texture, the color. I just think this suit has great character. I've chosen navy because I think gray would be just a little too office. Again, we're gonna be outside in the hills, a little more friendly, laid back of client. It is a little bit informal, and I think 
Personally, I would prefer the color to be a bit darker for this specific occasion, but I will speak more on formality later. Plus, the more formal vest and pocket square, which we'll look at in just a moment, really help balance it out. The trousers are more formal, which also helps with that balance. They have a one and a half inch cuff, side adjusters, and tend to land with a quarter break on my shoes. For my pocket square, I'm sticking with my tried and true tie white silk again from Sam Hober. For a client with whom I'm already pretty familiar, I usually like to wear it this way with the edges shown up because I think the hand rolled edges make this very beautiful shimmering staircase effect that goes well with the texture of the suit. But I think instead I'm going to wear it like this because that is a little more clean, a little more formal, a little more austere. Sometimes intentional stylistic choices can come across as accidental or sloppy. So for these folks, I think I'm just gonna play it safe. And for my watch, I'm going with my leather strap watch. It's minimal, quiet, classic, and matches the leather of my footwear. This watch is very special. It was a gift to me. There is a lovely story behind it, though that is a story for another day. And then lastly, we've got shoes. As you can see, these properties all have multiple acres and are up in the mountains. We'll be walking around the parcel in the forest, which means I really want form and function here. And the perfect mix of those two things is the Chelsea boot. Sartorially speaking, boots are actually not that great with this outfit. A little more classier would be something like Oxfords, loafers, or even a pair of finer derbies. But we'll talk more about that later. These are the Cavalier by Thursday. Uh, they're very nice, they're about $200. They come with these TPU studs here, which are really great because again, in the forest here in arid Colorado, the ground tends to be a little more rocky, a little more abrasive. So these just help preserve the integrity of that leather sole. I don't wanna to be too flashy, so I'm just gonna apply one layer of wax and give them a brush so they have a nice soft shine. And I'm also going to touch up the sole edges. You can see here, they're a little bit worn. And so I really want to just make sure that's cleaned up a little bit. These don't have to be super stunning. They just need to look good and clean and refined. A good rule of thumb for footwear in general, I think is that you don't want your footwear to attract attention, but if they are noticed, you want people to be impressed with the quality and the condition in which they are kept. For this specific occasion, my socks are definitely not even gonna be seen, so it's not super important. I'll probably just wear my over-the-calf socks from Boardroom Merino Wool. They're a little bit thicker, they're a little bit warmer for this cold winter weather. And that's it. That's the whole outfit. I have some hardier textural elements that bring some sophistication, interest, and seasonal suitability to the outfit while retaining some more clean, formal elements that ground it in professionalism and austerity. If it was a bit colder, I might throw in a scarf or some earmuffs, but this is ready to go. Now, before I go, I have to address some concerns I'm sure people are having because are you serious? You're gonna show $3.5 million homes in that? Patch pockets? Christopher, are you out of your mind? Well, actually, yes. But this is not a symptom of it. This is Boulder, Colorado. And the first of three points I wanna make is that I could lose the vest, the tie, and the pocket square and still be considered unusually formal. Classic menswear is not part of the professional culture here in the same way as it is Manhattan or Chicago. If I were showing $3 million property there, I would probably wear a dark gray wool suit with flat pockets. That outfit would be off-putting to many of my clients in Boulder and even some of them in Denver. Furthermore, real estate is an industry where clients like to see some personality, some character in their broker. An investment banker or lawyer might look at me and think they'd get laughed out of the room if they dressed like this. And they might be right. It's a totally different industry with different expectations. And that leads me to my next point, which is that dressing professionally is not about us. It is about our clients, our colleagues, our business partners. It is about helping them have trust that we will take care of them with whatever responsibilities we've been assigned. From a sartorial standpoint, my black Oxfords from TLB Mallorca would go much better with this outfit. But I know my client, who's a very nice person, is going to want to walk the parcel and they will feel bad about having me walk with them in the woods in my nice shoes. It is more important that the client feels comfortable performing their due diligence than that I meet some cosmic audit criterion 
of classic menswear. Which is the third point. I could pick apart this outfit in many ways, but this video is to show you that it's not always perfect, it's not always straightforward. Sometimes you have to bend the rules a little bit and wear boots with an outfit that isn't that great with boots because context matters. Sometimes you buy a suit, then two years later you start another business, stop going to the gym, you gain a little bit of weight, and then someone comments that your butt is falling out of your jacket. I'm not bitter about it, I'm just saying-